Do you smell that? Ah, the smell of fresh nostalgia. I've been wanting to play this game for quite some time and was looking really forward to kicking off this series with Majesty. This game is really a trip down memory lane and words can't really express the sentimental feeling that you have. It's sort of like when you walk past that old bakery that's still there 20 years ago at the same block you used to live in. Just a whiff of that smell and all those memories just come right back. I plan to finish this game's campaign in its entirety. I want to see if I can get that fresh whiff of nostalgia and to see if this game brings back those memories from 20 years ago. Well, it's been at least 20 years I haven't played this game, so I decided to follow what the game told me and play the tutorial. The first mission on the list was the bell, the book and the candle. Some thieves stole these artifacts and it was up to us to retrieve the stolen items. I decided to pop down a ranger's encampment and gnome hovel. If memory serves correctly, the gnomes are also doubled as building heroes. And since there are hardly any peasants at the start, I thought it was a good investment to get my buildings and upgrades done quickly. I tried renaming the gnome into Smeagol and the ranger to Robin Hood, but I realized they had to be at least level 10 before a name change. Oh well. But my goodness, this Medusa hits like a freaking truck dude. This one unit alone killed so many of my units. Oh, that's pretty cool. Gnome hovels seem to spread autonomously. Just gotta keep adding them heroes then. I eventually upgraded my castle and contemplated what temple to build. But I settled for some temples of Agrilla for some much needed healing on the team. With the temple of Agrilla, there is also the temple to Doris, so I chucked in a couple of monks as well. There, our first target. That is uh, the ruined altar, which contains the stolen book. A bounty of uh, 100 should do, right? Hmm, yeah, it's taking way too long. Let's try upgrading the bounty to about 500. Yeah, 500 should do the trick. Many more people are on the hunt now. Not long after, I found a second target, the Ruined Keep. Same like the first one, I'm gonna put a bounty of uh, 500 on this one as well. Now I just gotta find the third location. Hmm. Ah, here we go. The Ruined Shrine containing the bell. A bounty of uh, as much as I can afford really. It's the last quest on the mission, shouldn't save a dime. If I recall properly, the mission should be over as soon as I destroy this last building. If this game works like a normal RTS at all, that is, and uh, yep, I was right. That's good though, because if it didn't end then, all that money would be, you know, been down the drain. The next mission I delved into is another beginner level, the Forsaken Land. A simple mission where I would need to destroy the evil castle. I started the mission as usual, plopping down a ranger's guild, a rogue's guild, and a warrior's guild. The usual free that you would normally start off with. Since I had a market to begin with, I started upgrading and got a blacksmith, and some castle upgrades as well. Woo! Some extra money from an ally. Don't mind if I do. I'm not sure if making a little outpost with an end so far like that was a smart idea. I realized that the tax collectors and peasants are quite flimsy, and for them to go all the way there, back and forth, might not be a really good use of their time. Oh well, too late. I'm already invested anyway. And also, these trolls are quite annoying. And there goes my market. Time to build a new one. Oh, a fountain. That's pretty sick. An extra tax collector. That's quite nice. I wonder what the prerequisites are. Having more tax collectors equals more money. There, there. The evil castle. Kill it with fire. I think a bounty of uh, 2,000 should be enticing enough for the whole damn populace to go after it. Sure enough, a group of the warrior guilds are on the task. And down goes the evil castle. I must admit, I'm having a lot of fun playing this game. The third beginner level, Rescue the Prince, was the first pain in my butt to finish, and the first time I had to actually reset a mission. The first round I began as usual, and was pretty exciting to have wizards. I didn't realize that these wizards were made of paper and sand, cause my goodness, they died in like one or two hits. Melting. The true definition of a glass cannon. I tried to be innovative and tried to use the invisibility spell on them to keep the wizards alive, and hopefully have them level up to a point where they could stand on their own. But I realized that constantly using the spell made my coffers dry up quicker than I could gain the funds. Alright, round two. Hopefully this time it'll go much more better than before. The strategy this time is to make sure the wizards have support behind the rogues and the warriors. Some meat shield in between should make the wizards much more viable. Hmm, seems to be okay for now. 
now it's time to incentivize the heroes to work together so they can gain some levels, especially the wizards. This run ran much more smoother as the wizards were able to hit a consistent level of 3 with the warriors being shields for them. Hmm, I think the warrior is like the best of all the classes and the heroes have no conception of kiting so the tanky and melee heroes seem to do much more better in the early game. I do find that using the arrow keys to move the camera is quite annoying, so I went into the options and I found that it didn't have any options for remapping controls, but I found the next best thing. It had game speed. I didn't realize that I could speed up the game, but my goodness, the game moved so much more quicker. Well, with this, I had so much more money all of a sudden. With this much money, I might as well build some royal gardens and a fairgrounds. And I'm just gonna chuck down a bunch of guilds and guardhouses. Now, maybe I should do the magic tourney to level up the wizards. Oh yeah, I also should put a bounty on the tower prison. I have the 2000 like last time she did a trick. Oh man, look at the hero's flock and uh, yeah, it's over. Wow, that was so quick. Next mission, please. Which brings us to the barren waste. Probably one of the most simplest and easiest out of all the missions so far. I start off with the normal start of the three guild buildings and let the heroes do their thing. I preemptively take out the dark castle, which I didn't know was a requirement for the mission. You know, I just like destroying things. But eventually, I get around to building the required fairgrounds and this mission's already over. Next up, the wizard's curse is a relatively easy mission where the catch is that the heroes don't behave as usual and are cursed. But for some reason, I didn't really notice weird AI behavior, and it didn't really affect the gameplay at all. Well, I think so anyway. Maybe it's because I sped up the game so quick, I just couldn't tell. I did the same here as I usually do, pluck down a bunch of buildings and let the heroes do their thing. I mean, you really don't have control over what they do, so... I did increase the speed to the fastest as possible, as you can see, and that's probably why it finished so quickly. It was at this point though that I realized that you can have all the factions, such as dwarves and elves. So I'm thinking of trying to fantasize some builds down the road, like only range units with elves, etc. Well, before I knew it, this mission too was already over. The next mission I went into was the last of the beginner missions, Scions of Chaos. This mission required me to kill three enemy heroes that were way over leveled. Level 35 to be exact. Wow. Now for some reason this mission says it's beginner level, but it was pretty difficult. I had to do a couple of resets, as the sorcery hero that you had to kill came way too early. I tried a couple of strategies like getting rid of my bazaar as I thought she came to buy items, but I think it didn't really matter in the end as she kept coming really early. Nice. No matter what I did. In the end, I was able to put down another temple and a barracks and was able to kill her just by spamming my own heroes. Since the enemy hero was already level 35, my heroes would level up significantly quickly as well. And once I had my own heroes that were over level 10, the rest of the scenario was pretty easy. Now all the beginner levels were complete, it was time to move on to the advanced difficulty level of missions. The first on the list was Quest for the Crown. The start of the mission was, um, a little unexpected. There were so many minotaurs, so all my buildings and my heroes were dying, so I was expecting a restart. However, thankfully on the east in front of my base, there were a couple of warriors able to hold down the fort for a little bit. That bought me enough time for me to build some temples, as I realized the castle was already level 2. I quickly got some paladins and healers, and a market in order for the heroes to have some potions. Having these set up allowed me to stabilize, and I concreted my defenses with some guard towers here and there. With time, my heroes were able to have some breathing room to explore, and I found a couple of elven bungalows and inns. This allowed me to gain some elven warriors to my party, which is always a nice welcome. Eventually, I found the crown site, which is set at 2000 bounty right away. I think 2000 is the sweet spot where it just calls everyone and what the hell is that? Evil Oculus looks like something straight from a Lovecraftian setting. Despite how scary it looks, it didn't seem to pack much of a punch and my heroes were able to take care of it, and then the crown side. Hmm, the next mission seems to tie in with the quest for blank, sort of a free part fetch quest. Here, our town is plagued by some sort of disease, and we need to find the magic ring in order to restore a citizen's health. 
The starting is as usual, except I have a Temple of Helia to begin with. Not really sure what they're good for, but I assume they're good at taking care of the undead. Hmm, might have to do some more research. And looky here, there is another civilization right next to us. It's the first time I have seen an entire kingdom in the same map, so that's pretty interesting. I wonder if they're friendly. Well, judging from how my heroes in the Red Kingdom heroes are just passing each other, I assume we are on friendly terms? And hmm, the hidden ring site is suspiciously close and not really guarded. I'm guessing when I get this, the Red Kingdom will declare war on me? Who knows, only one way to find out. 500 gold bounty cause I'm broke. Now while we wait, I'm going to build some temple of Fervus and Crypta, because I always make paladins and healers, so let's go for something different shall we? I'm still not sure what the fairgrounds actually does, I know the gardens give some kind of blessing which in turn gives buffs, and the statues give loyalty. Does the fairgrounds serve as like a training point? Give experience? Oh 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 oh, the site is about to be destroyed. Come on Senef, you're the MVP ranger. And the game didn't end, hmm. A bunch of heroes are suddenly dying. Ah, I see. Now there's a bunch of rampant monsters on the loose. And I guess I am fighting the Red Kingdom. Time for a bunch of upgrades and to spam heroes. Pretty sure it will eventually lead to something. These priestesses sort of remind me of the wizards. Very flimsy and die really quickly. Which reminds me, let's build some wizards. Let's see the progress on that ring, shall we? Hmm, oh, we see Sora of the Wizard pick it up. Wait, a wizard? A wizard that dies in one hit? And predicted that. Now for someone actually reliable to pick it up. Yes, a level 11 ranger, Belshire Broadview. I'm sure we'll take it back to the castle. I actually didn't see him take it back, but I guess he did as I won. The last of the quest trilogy, I seem to be sick with some insidious ailment and need to drink from the holy chalice in order to recover. If I don't in 30 days, I will eventually pass. The old wizard Resenthal seems to be very informative as for all the quest missions so far, he has told me of legendary items that can aid and help with the dangers and problems we have. This wizard even needs a raise or maybe he's the primary cause of all of this. Hmm, need to probably get him a background check. Anywho. I start off with a Temple of Doris, Fairground, and Market. A bountiful start. Actually, except I don't have enough money. I want to get Paladins and Rangers out so they can scour the land. And when I have enough money, I should be able to afford the level 2 upgrade for my castle and get some healers out, which I eventually will do in turn. Hmm, 10 days has passed and that's a third of my time limit gone, which kinda makes me pressed for time. I decide to get out a second Ranger encampment and some elves. And while I'm doing that, I find the quest location. The usual bounty of 2000 should do the trick. Now time to spam some heroes so they can take care of it. Wow, a level 4 monk just died so easily. The monsters seem to be a little strong. Time to get the healers that I need. Rongol the Hunter is a quite formidable foe. Need to spam more upgrades and heroes. Oh man, a level 11 paladin? That's unfortunate. Elves, ah, uh, no seem to die so quickly. Oh. All I can hear is them dying in the background. Truly no fun at all. Hmm, 20 days has passed, and I only have 10 days left. Time to up the bounty. 2000 gold doesn't seem to be worth the risk for the champions of the kingdom. Let's double the bounty, I say. 4000, here, here. And to get this bounty, let's get some more heroes and a royal garden just to boost the heroes and give them some blessings. The 4000 gold bounty seems to be doing the trick. A mix of rangers, elves, monks, and paladins. Why aren't the healers there? Someone's slacking off. Maybe should have built some statues too. Oh, hello evil oculus. I see you came back for more, and you brought your twin too. Crap, five days left. Maybe entice the heroes with an explore flag right next to the quest item, as I need to retrieve it still. How's 2,600 gold to explore the already explored land? Ah, I regret bad talking to elves. Here comes my savior. Yes to the charmer. I shall say yes to your charm. Oh, and just picking it up seems good enough. The last of the trilogy of the quest fetch is done. Now it's time to go and free some slaves. This mission contains four slave pits which I need to destroy and after everyone is free, I need to kill a dog like monster that kind of resembles Cerebus. 
I start off the mission with a rogue guild and a gnome hovel, so I get to the normal spam of pumping out buildings and heroes. Like always, the first priority is a market and a ranger's guild, so I can get some exploration done. I also pop down a blacksmith's so my heroes can get that much needed upgrades to their weapons and armor. My rangers make quick work of exploring around the map, and I'm able to get some allied buildings which is quite useful. I make sure to build up a sizable force and bank in order to take down the four slave pits and the boss that will appear at the end of the scenario. Surprisingly, while building up my forces, one of the slave pits go down and wait a minute, is that a warrior of discord? That makes no sense, I shouldn't be able to- oh, I see. Destroying the slave pits actually gives me units since I free the slaves. Freeing the slaves actually creates a huge snowball effect as each pit I destroy I get about 5 free units. It's actually really smooth sailing from here, as I put down a 2000 gold bounty on one of the slave pits and a 4000 gold bounty on the other. Now last but not least, here comes Cerebus, <coughs> I mean Earlshek, the free headed dog monster, which dies not too soon after an increasing bounty of, drumroll please, about 5300, not too bad, lasted a little bit but not too long enough. Just like me and to further build up our kingdom, we need to establish trade routes with nearby kingdoms, and the best way to do that is to protect the caravans and our markets. Unfortunately, the first time round we tried this mission, and to secure the trade routes, it didn't go so well, as the goblins came and overran us. They overran us so badly that we had to <clears throat> uh, reverse time and try again. Second time's the charm, they say. This time, I'm gonna go all range. Sort of like a theme, have guard towers surrounding my base, and have a bunch of ranger, rogue guilds, and elven bungalows. Thematically, this was pretty cool to see, as I would see a bunch of ranged heroes running around like a ragtag group of Robin Hood. But this mission kept trying to throw me curveballs, so I had to get some healers. And a bunch of other heroes and guilds, so the ranged theme was thrown out pretty quickly, and still was fun for the couple of first days. The rest of the mission consisted of me just swatting away the flies, like enemy rogue encampments, the goblins, a bunch of weird events that spawned in a diversity of enemies. The true fun lied in the new types of buildings I could build. The mausoleum was what piqued my interest, as reviving heroes from the dead would be quintessential for the late game, as I needed heroes that weren't freshly baked level 1s. There was also the wizard abode, magic abode, not sure what it did but it looked like I could use a bunch of spells similar to the wizard's tower, but I wasn't too keen on this just now. The embassy was a new fun addition as I could have random heroes and list into my roster, which I'm not against at all. After defending wave after wave and enduring the random events, eventually on day 32 the last caravan was sent and the trade link was established. Now I really hate time constraint missions, as I don't like being pressured into doing things, you know. I just want to take my sweet sweet time doing the mission how I please, so I knew that I would really despise this next mission. Apparently, my mother has made a deal with the demon and I owe him what? A hundred thousand gold? Even I haven't seen that kind of money in my game. That's a lot of moolah to make in 40 days. I'm not gonna lie, I failed this mission first time around because I thought the amount was 40,000 gold for some reason. And when I hit the amount, I was wondering why it was still running. So I thought, hmm, 50,000 was it? Turned out to be double that amount. Well, I guess here we go again. This time with my mindset straight and ready to make that 100G, I decided to make a bunch of buildings that produces gold, like guilds, trade posts, inns, fairgrounds, gardens, libraries, all that good stuff. I thought that each building has their own individual coffers, so more buildings equals more money for tax collectors to collect. I think I was on the right page on this one, but I failed a second time with a bank of 79,000. Oof, still 21,000 short. Oh boy, I actually need to strategize for this one, huh? I read through the Steam community posts to learn how to make the big bucks, as I really didn't want to spend another hour learning by trial and error, so I decided to learn from the next best thing, the community forum posts on Steam. I learned that trading posts that are further from the market actually send more money through caravans, and that tax collectors can actually make their rounds through guard posts, huh? That's pretty neat. So I decided to make a guard post surrounded by one trading post and a bunch of inns. Also, the elves W income or something like that, so I decided to chuck them in there as well. Not 100% sure how they help, but I'm sure the community knows better than me, so I'll trust their opinion. I tried being extra frugal this time around, so I probably would have won if I didn't build so many unnecessary buildings. Sure enough, 
I was reaching the amount by nearly day 37, with still 3 days to spare. I decided to win on a flashy note and decided to get that remaining 2000 by using the extort function on the rogues guild. Just when I thought I got the hardest mission that I will ever play out of the way, Majesty decides to send me another curveball. An elven treachery is by far the most restarts I've ever done. Probably at least 5 or 6 reruns. At first, I tried saving the money as I thought I could just repeat the steps I did previously. But the elves were just too aggressive and I wasn't able to get my own snowball running in order to secure my lands. I decided the genocide route would be the better option and I opted to just kill all the elves. I got so close to destroying all the elven buildings during the forefront, but I ran out of time when there were just a handful of enemy units and buildings left. The fifth time around, I decided an eye for an eye and tried to spam as much as ranges as possible for both the early scouting and so that I could clear out the enemy bases quicker and to match ranged units with ranged units. The idea was great, just the execution was terrible and I lost all my units and my money. Time to restart again. Six times the charm. This run ran so much smoother. I was able to secure a footing in my lands and I tried getting the strongest units out as soon as possible, such as paladins with healers and support from the dwarves. Yes, thematically I wanted the dwarves to be the one to take care of the elves, and ironically enough, just when I was running out of time and thought I needed another restart, the dwarves came to the rescue and destroyed the last building on the map. All calculated. With a name such as Hold of the Goblin Horde, I expected this mission to be very challenging, with hordes of goblins swarming through my kingdom, setting ablaze everything and leaving in its wake fire, destruction and rubble. However, it was a really simple mission. I had a level 2 castle in the start and two powerful warriors of discords as well. The nearby wizard guild that belonged to a novel monarch helped out a lot as well, tributing gold to the cause every now and then. And I was able to finish the mission in about 10 days, with nothing in particular happening. Well, after the last two missions, this was a nice change of pacing as it helped me relax and recuperate my energy. For the next mission, that is. <sighs> after that nice and easy mission of killing off the goblins, the rats shouldn't be too much of a challenge, right? 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 After all, goblins are much stronger than rats. Well, that's in my opinion anyway. How I was so wrong. The main objective this time around was to destroy all the broken sewers and take down the Rat King Rodan. Huh. Besides the name being a little on the nose, I didn't think much of this mission at all. I started this mission like how I would any other mission, but opted for an all ranged assault route. Rangers, rogues, elves, the whole shebang. It started off okay, but my goodness, the rats were relentless and pretty clever. Up to this point, the only buildings the enemy would attack were the guard towers, markets and inns, never really the guild buildings themselves. This time was a little different. The rats brought out the big guns, their champions, sorcerers, catapults, all coming in swarms. They pretty much destroyed everything and it was time for another restart. Second time around, I tried the same thing, but quicker with more static defense. Albert Einstein once said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. As you can tell, it didn't really work out the second time. Or a third time? The fourth or the fifth? <sighs> the sixth run. Ah, seems to be my magic number. My main castle and the level 2 blacksmith and the trading inn were really close to each other this time. An excellent start. The starting seed this time was awesome. I decided to experiment and try something new. I built sorcerers instead of healers and I tried quickly to rush out a dwarven settlement. This would be an excellent building as not only would it provide heroes, but also static defense and the addition of being able to build ballista towers. Ballista towers were my main goal as it's always a fixed price of 950 gold and doesn't need further upgrades. That along with a couple of guard towers should be able to hold my defenses in place, providing support for my champions when the rats come in for their attack. And sure enough, it was exactly what I needed. With my defenses in place, my heroes were able to scour the land and get rid of all the feral rats in the neighborhood. And for the rat kick rodent, we hardly broke a sweat. I'd say this mission was probably the most balanced so far for its difficulty. It wasn't extremely easy, nor was it extremely difficult. Now, I really wanted to complete a mission with just using rogues, rangers and elves. And yeah, I did kinda cheat at the end by adding some healers, some monks and some mages, but uh, trust me, the 
The starting was all these strange bad boys. Anyway, I had to destroy the fortress of Ixmel, a moving castle that would teleport around the map. And once it did, it would send a huge swarm of enemies, usually consisting of the undead and the demonic kind. And they really packed a punch. A lot of my buildings, civilians and heroes got annihilated and there was a point where I thought I would have to restart. Huh, take a shot every time I say restart in this video. But fortunately, I was able to stave off the forces of evil and I had enough funds to rebuild most of my buildings and even add in a couple of guard towers. I slowly expanded my town, probably to the biggest size it has ever been, and added like at least 5 of the ranger, rogue and elven guilds, quite the plethora of ranged champions. And for some odd reason, the castle teleported right next to my base, making it an easy target for my heroes to quickly take it out, when I was busy not even looking. Ah, the beauty of ranged units. Which directly leads to the next mission, where rogues and elves have actually teamed up with goblins and have uh, soiled the land with their promiscuous gambling and entertainment. We must rid ourselves of this unorthodox behavior and turn this settlement into a dull and dim land void of bodily pleasures. For this, I must call upon the Temple of Agrilla and Darius. Our holy champions and paladins will make quick work of these ragtag hooligans. Now, on the witch hunt. Unfortunately, the bows and arrows were a little too much for our weak armor and robes. I guess for a second run, we must call upon the Sisters of Cryptor and their dark demonic powers. The sight of this unholy matrimony and their walking undead should scare off the elves and the rogues, blazing through as they walk through the Valley of the Dead. De I tried going feral and asking the troubled barbarians and the Temple of Krom to lend a hand, but like the barbarians they were, they rushed in head first, berserking and dying before their axes stuck true. Okay, I guess it's time for the tried and true rush for a dwarven settlement, for some static D. Nice. I rushed my blacksmith to level 3 and started building my first dwarven settlement, and placed down ballista towers, and then a second settlement. Oh, wait a minute, why aren't they attacking each other? Hmm, do they only attack if I make the first move? Hold on, let me try something. A few moments later. As you can see, I have covered at least half of the map with ballista towers and I'm steadily building guilds all over the map. The plan is to swarm the entire map and the enemy guilds with my buildings and static defense. Day 75, it's time to commence the assault. Let's see how fast we can kill all of them. As soon as I attack, the sound of the enemy and my own champions dropping like flies can be heard. Evil. But in measly 4 days, I managed to wrap it up. The Clash of Empires is the last of the advanced difficulty missions that I had to face. This one was relatively easy as the Temple of Fervous Cultists were able to spawn and control minions. On top of that, the Sisters of Crypta summoned skeletons which added a lot of cannon fodder which increased their and the kingdom's survivability significantly. A lot of the early champions did die, but I built a mausoleum early in the game in order to have the higher leveled ones preserved to use later. For this round, the strongest offense was a strong defense. This meant enrolling the dwarves into our team. The dwarven settlements and the ballistas are so useful next to the guard towers. Hmm, should try to add wizard towers next time to the mix. Triple tower, tri triple tower, triple tower fret. Such a tongue twister. Should try that next time though. Eventually, I was able to conquer the entire left side of the map and have a decent size of a force that was able to take down all the remaining rats and goblins. Now, I really wanted to fit all the missions in one video, but while editing this, I realized that it would take way too long as I still had half of the missions left and a bunch of editing and work to do still. Plus, this video is already 30 minutes long, so I decided to break this down into a two part series. This took quite some time to do, but I really enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed this process with me. Let me know if this reminded you, as much as it did for me, the wonderful fond memories of the past. The best way to be informed of part 2 of Majesty and other similar indie and old games content? Please subscribe and like and leave a comment below as it would mean the world to me. Until next time, have a great day your majesty.